in section 7-4. Now this is two days. So we'll do part of it today. We'll do part of it on Monday. Um, so you won't be able to finish the homework for it over the weekend. Um, but today we're going to start talking about vectors. Um, if you've taken physics, you maybe have talked about vectors in there. Okay. Um, but vectors, I, I think of a vector as this is a vector right here. Okay. Where I see vectors. All right. I see vectors uh, whenever I watch a weather, uh, like a map. With weathers, do, do, you re, do you remember seeing, when you've seen them, little lines like that? These here are representing the, um, the wind, like what direction the wind is coming from. And so if you have vectors all in the same area, you know, that look like this kind of thing, all of the, you know, wind is going in the same direction. But then sometimes you start seeing where it reaches a certain point and it starts heading in a different direction kind of thing. Or what if then it starts doing this as well? <laughs> and then this as well. You might be in like a tornado situation where the wind is, you know, kind of swirling sort of thing. Okay. But more generally, the wind kind of tends to go in the same direction. When we look at our weather here, so the other day we had um, a tornado warning, right? The tornado warning, what it showed on, um, if you looked at the map of Ohio, so this is a really, you know, bad thing of Ohio here, but it was showing coming straight up um, the state like this. Okay, if, if you looked at the weather map at all, it was showing that a storm was coming straight up through. And so what that does is it allows the weather system, or the, the weather people, like, they can warn the people in that path of that wind, okay? And so when I was out the other day, I happened to be over here when this was happening. I drove down here, across here, up here, and then down like this. Like, that was my path that I was driving. I got a phone call from one of my daughters when I was right about here telling me there was a tornado warning and that a tornado had touched down in Worcester. Get off the road, Mom! <laughs> you know, I had no idea. But I could see the skies, and, like, we could see the system. Like, you could see it go through. You could see on the other side were blue skies. Where we were at was, you know, 70 degrees, nice weather, you know. But then when we had to drive across through it, it was raining, but it wasn't raining like I would have thought a tornado. You know, I think it had already passed by the time you know, we had got to that point. So we did not need to pull over. But then once we got over here and started going back 71 north to 76 to 77, when we were here, this storm was every everything to the left. I mean, it was like this front that you could see. There was a beginning and an end to it that, as it was going through. So it was kind of interesting. But when we looked at the weather map, it was showing, you know, this kind of thing right here. The other place that I see vectors, um, have any of you ever played soccer? Okay. Have you ever kicked the ball at the same time as somebody else in an opposing direction? Probably. That's what soccer's about, right? And sometimes the ball ricochets and go off, goes off into one direction. Sometimes it goes forward. Sometimes it goes this way, depending on the force that is behind the kick. So at that point, your path of your foot and as it, as it touches the ball, that's a vector right there. It's the same with volleyball. Have you ever been up at the net at volleyball and you go to hit the ball at the same time that someone else is on the other side? And sometimes it just drops down. It, it, they make crazy paths. Sometimes it just stays there for a second and then the net is at the top of the net so it kind of you know, goes to one side or another. And sometimes it goes to the other side. And sometimes both of them do it and it ricochets off in that direction. Okay, it all comes down to the forces and the vectors of you know, your arm coming through, like that path of your hand coming through and hitting that ball. So we have vectors around us in our world. Oh, did any of you ever have those little stuffed animals that had a little thing on their ear that had a code that you went into the computer, you typed in the code, and now you said, what was it called? Web kids. Web kids. I couldn't remember the name of it. So you guys remember that? Did you have that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember how when you wanted to take and move something, everything was done? <laughs> I don't know if I can. Where's, where's the marker? 
maybe I should do it up here. Everything was done. It like had these things like this that you like moved along. Um, you know, like as you were moving something, you moved along these little mini vectors is what you were doing in that program. That program was very mathematical who created it. And so when my kids would have it, I would look at I would see the math behind it like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, but that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Do they still have those? I, I haven't heard of them for a long time. Yeah, but I, I guess my point here is I'm trying to get you to understand that you have dealt with vectors whether you realize it or not. Okay, they are around you. So anyways, we start out today with kind of some definitions. Um, and then from there, we'll kind of hit little mini problems throughout. Uh, but first, I kind of have to explain it since you've never seen it in math. And some of you haven't taken physics, so you don't have any kind of knowledge of it. So don't feel you have to write all of this down, okay? But write down what you need. So I have many physical quantities such as length, area, volume, mass, and temperature are completely described by their magnitudes or their sizes in appropriate units. Such quantities are called scalar quantities. Other physical quantities that are not like something that, you know, you think about measuring with a scale or, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess those are all, a lot of them are scale. Area is not, length is not, a, a ruler, a scale of some sort. Um, other physical quantities though, are velocity, acceleration, and force. These are described only if both the magnitude and the direction are specified. Such quantities are called vector quantities. So we have two things we're talking about. Something you physically could measure or weigh, and something else that isn't easy to, it, it's not as easy to figure out, okay? Like you have a speedometer on your car that measures speed. But you do not have a velocitometer on your car that measures velocity. I don't know if they have such a tool, okay? So one of the things we will talk about is speed versus velocity before we're done with everything in this lesson. So for example, the current wind measurement is 15 miles per hour southwest. They don't just give the 15 miles per hour. They also tell us what direction it's coming from. Do you realize that your snow days come from when we have a storm that comes from the south? We don't get snow days with storms that come from the north. Okay? Lake Erie has a huge impact on us. Our gray skies, those are from Lake Erie. Okay? Storms coming from the north, we're not in the snow belt. We get part of that snow, but we don't get what the counties closer to Lake Erie get. So all of our storms, like the southwest, coming from the southwest, it means it's headed up in this direction. As soon as you see vectors like that, you can almost count on a snow day, okay? But not a lot of our storms come from that way. Have you ever heard nor'easter? It's heading northeast. That's what this is, northeast. It's heading northeast. Those are the kinds of days that we get snow days. And there are nor'easters. As soon as you hear that, okay, it's just talking about north and east. So this is a vector quantity because it gives both the magnitude, the size of it, and the direction of it. Whereas if you're measuring the area of something, you're saying unit squared. You know, you, don't, you have one label to it. A vector can be represented geometrically by a directed line segment, and that's what I have right here, a directed line segment, with an arrow on its head. The arrow specifies the direction of the vector, and its length, how long it is here, describes the magnitude. So on your notes, you should probably put something like length equals magnitude. Because you'll think of it as length, but the problem, the directions, will use the word magnitude. 
So when they say find the magnitude, you're like, yeah, I don't know what that is. You know, it's just how long is it? That's all it means. Just the vocabulary. Word. It says the tail of the arrow is the vector's initial point. This is the tail down here. And then the tip of the arrow is its terminal point. So it starts here, it ends there. This is the head, this is the tail. And it's not like geometry where it keeps going. That's all the longer it is. So you can't make it longer, you have to make it that same size. And once we do this little paper um, that I passed out to you, um, you'll kind of see that, that you can't make it any longer. You have to make it that exact line. Vectors are denoted by lowercase bold face type. So if I want to say vector A, it more looks like this. It's darker on your paper. You're going to see that. In fact, look at the paper that I gave out to you today because you can see it on there. Do you see like U plus 3W? Do you see how the 3 is not as dark as the U and the W? The U and the W are bolded, and so they're vectors. They're referring to vectors. There are some textbooks that refer to a vector without bold letters, and they put a little vector on the top of it to say this is vector A. So like all the years that I taught IB, the IB classes, their textbooks used both. Your textbook tends to use just the bold. But I do want you to understand if you're ever like, if, if you get stuck on something and you try to research on the internet, you know, how to do a problem, you may see it this way as well. Okay. With vectors, real numbers, uh, uh, real number are scalars. Scalars are denoted by lowercase italic type. We're going to talk more about that word scalar in a little bit, too. All right, so let's kind of focus on the magnitude. Another word, again, I didn't see it a lot in your textbook, but the word norm, that was something was more in the IV textbook, okay? But it is out there. So if you're doing something online, if you're looking something up outside of your book, it's good for you to know. The magnitude or the norm, which is also the length of the vector, of vector PQ they're saying, is denoted as, if they're calling vector PQ, see the arrow on the top of that? I don't know if you can see that. Or a bold face V, they could do either, okay, is either denoted with double lines around it or double lines around this one. It doesn't matter which one. It's referring to the length. As soon as you see those, think of length. Think of magnitude. So one of the things we will be doing before the end of this lesson is we'll be finding a magnitude of something. Okay. Here's a picture showing the initial point, the terminal point. Now, are vectors ever equivalent? Some are. These two right here, don't they look like they're the same length? But their initial point is in a different spot, and their arrow is in a different spot. These are opposites of each other. They're not, they're the same length, but they go in a different direction. So would it make a difference if the wind went that way or the wind went this way? Absolutely. So we can't say that they're equal to each other. Okay? Instead, we say they're not equal to each other. What we could say is that A equals negative vector V. It is the opposite direction. And you could represent that with just a negative right in the front of it. Here, vector V and vector W, these are the only ones that are equivalent for what I have up here. They're parallel to each other. They're the same length. They have the same initial point. If I took this one and put it on top of that one, they would be the same exact thing. Okay, So that's what makes them equivalent. Even though these two are parallel, they're not the same length. And so they're not equal to each other. And these two here, <laughs> definitely, there's no question on that one. They're going in different directions. They're different lengths. They have nothing that's the same. Okay. The vector of length zero is called the zero vector. That's bolded right there. 
and is denoted by a bold zero. The zero vector has no length. It has no direction. I mean, it has an arbitrary direction, meaning it could go anywhere. You don't know the direction. And then I already mentioned this on the other slide. If the vectors have the same length, but they go in opposite directions, you could just say one is equal to the opposite of the other one. Next, we go into geometric vector addition. Okay. You have two vectors, V and W, and you want to add them. So you take vector V, which here's vector V, and then to add vector W to it, where vector V leaves off, you pick up with vector W. And then from there, the answer is wherever this started and wherever it ended, this vector is V plus W. Well, V plus W is the same as W plus V. What if we started with W first? Here's W. And then I add V to it. Beginning to end, it's the same exact vector. So it doesn't matter whether you have one vector plus another and you switch it around and add them in a different order, you still will get the same answer. Vector subtraction. That's a little bit, it tweaks your brain just a little bit with subtraction, okay? You want to think of subtraction as adding the opposite. So the opposite of W would mean W is the, er, negative W is the opposite of W. So when I do this, I say, here's vector V. And then when I take negative vector W, where this leaves off, if this is W, then negative W is going to be going from here to here. So I would take that and add it to the end right there. My answer is where I started, where I ended. Do you see how this is the same vector as this? Okay, just screw it over here. And that's what this paper is. We're almost ready for this paper for us to try a few. Okay. Uh, but first, we have to know about scalar multiples. Here's that word scalar again. They said scalar was just a number. So scalar means you're going to multiply a vector by something. So like if this is vector v and you want 2v, it's parallel to that. It's just one and then another. Where like. Technically, you'd almost have an arrow here saying, here's the first one, here's the second one. But you don't need to have the arrow in the middle showing that. Okay, it has to be parallel to it and just double its size. So if you had one half V, then it would go like that. Okay, so you just double the length, triple the length, you know, whatever it happens to be. Oh, I guess I had a half V right here. And then what about negative 2v? Well, it's just like the negative 2, but you're going to start at the other end instead. Have your arrow in the other direction. How you get used to those is by doing these that we're going to do here. Oops. I just changed the order of something. All right. So here we go. Pull that paper out that I gave you. Using vector u, so vector u goes up one and to the right two. Vector v, which is just horizontal and is a length of three units. And vector w, which comes down one and to the right one. It's just short. They always have to give you the vectors. Okay, now over here, it says u plus 3w. I start with u. You can start anywhere. You might run out of graph. In which case, you might erase it and then move it around, okay? I'm just going to start right here. If I start right here and I have vector u, I have to go up one and to the right two, and I get this right here. This is vector u. From that, I need to go three times w. w is down one into the right one. So I'm going to go down one into the right one, down one into the right one, down one into the right one. It's going to go right to here. This is 3w. 
So where this one ended, I start the next one. I made it three times as long. My answer. I start where this started. I end where this ended. This right here is u plus 3w. So do you see how that works? Draw the one where you leave off. You start the next one. And then you, where your beginning is, that's your initial point. And where your ending is, that is your terminal point. All right. So this one here, I wanted one with subtraction. So this means 2v plus negative u. So I start with 2v. Well, 2v, I might start here and go 1, 2v. That's 2v. Again, start wherever you want. Negative u means that. So if I'm going to take that and add it to the end of this, that's right there. My answer is from here to here. This here is 2v minus u. Any questions you want to ask? All right, this next one, I have to tell you, all of the vectors I have taught in my 28 years of teaching, I have never seen one quite like this one. This one reminds me of a tornado, okay? So it's quite interesting, all right? But it means 2w plus negative v plus 2u. Well, 2w could be something like this. This is 2w. Plus negative v. Well, negative v starts here and ends here, right? And so if I take that, where this one left off, I get this. There's negative v. And then I'm going to add 2u. Well, 2u, this is 1u, so 2u is going to be like that. Do you see how it crosses over the other one? So imagine a wind, a wind, a wind, right? It's like crossing over its path, and that's what a tornado does, right? That's why I say it reminds me of a tornado. My answer would still start where this one started and end <coughs> where this one ended. 2w minus v plus 2u. So as you do like your homework or on a test, like more so on a quiz um, or a test, it's okay to use two colors. Like use pencil for adding the vectors together and then for your final answer do pen. Because sometimes I will tell you, you'll start in a certain place and it'll be going off the graph and it will bother you. Okay. All right, I'm going to pause the video, and I want you guys to try the bottom three. Notice there's new uh, U, V, and W. They're defined differently. You'll have, so good job on those. All right, now, more, more math now, okay? Let's find out how to, how to find that length and stuff. All right, a vector drawn with its initial point at the origin, if it starts at the origin and not just out in the middle of the graph somewhere, it does have a special name. It's called a position vector. And whenever we can get a vector so that it is at the origin, it's going to make our work easier as well with what we have to do with them down the line. Specifying the terminal point of a vector will completely determine the vector. For the position vector v with an initial point at the origin, the terminal point is called v1 and v2. We denote this by either a bold v, by the name of the beginning and end, op, with an arrow over the top, or with these new fancy little brackets that kind of go like this on either side. That's how you know it's not a point. 
and it's a vector. Okay? So, like, if it's like this, then it's x, y. It's a point. This means it's a point. But as soon as you see these, um, I don't know what you call them, parentheses with it, you know, that are, like, drawn with lines, it's a vector. And so that's how you would know it. We call v1 and v2 the components of the vector. v1 is the first component, v2 is the second component. Now, for the magnitude. The magnitude of a position vector, it has to be a position vector for this to work, follows directly from the Pythagorean theorem. So we already saw on one of the other slides that if it has double lines on either side, that means magnitude. And what you do is you take the square root of v squared plus y squared, or v, v1 squared plus v2 squared. We just have to square each of them. Where that comes from is also the distance formula. Do you remember the distance formula of two points? x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and that's the square root of that. It's the same formula, but one of the points is zero, so when you take the x2 minus x1, it's x2 minus zero, which is just x2 kind of thing. Now, if you have vector v as v1 and v2, and vector w is w1 and w2, vector v equals vector w if the first term here is equal to the first term, and the second term is equal to the second term. It's the only way that they're equal to each other. Here I have a vector, pq, that is not in standard position. What I really want to do is I want to move it so that it comes down here. I want to move this point so that it becomes this point down here. So we have vector pq with initial point of p, which is x1, y1, and a terminal point of x2, y2, is equal to this position vector right here. See how they're parallel to each other and they're the same length? Let w be the vector with the initial point negative 2, 7, and the terminal point 1, negative 3. Write w as a position vector. So how you could write this as a position vector is take the two x's and subtract them. Negative 2 minus 1. Oh, I guess I have to take q and then p. Sorry, I just did that in the wrong order. Since this is called pq, the order that I do it matters. I have to do the q minus the p. Uh, 1 minus negative 2. And then negative 3 minus 7. So this is 3, negative 10. So if I would graph those points out, you know, and think about to the left 2, up 7, to the right 1, down 3, it, I would take and move that thing right there and, come on, move it down here. It's 3, negative 10. Okay, that's what you're doing by taking this. So you should have this for sure written on your paper. That's how you change any old vector to a position vector. Then there are some operations that work with vectors. Let's say I have vector u, v, and w. And um, they're called vector, it says, vectors and c and d are any scalars what are scalars numbers so that means you're just going to multiply a vector by a number okay then if you have two vectors that you're adding together you add the first part the first component together you add the second component together and then you have v plus u same thing for subtraction take it's basically adding the x values together adding the y values together or subtracting and subtracting. If you have two vectors that are three vectors that you're adding, it does not matter whether you add the first two and then add the, the last one, or whether you add the last ones and then this one. This one here is called the associative property. I don't know if you remember that from early on. This here with vector C is saying you can multiply a vector as long as you distribute to both the X and Y and multiply both, both parts. 
same with addition. It can be distributed or it could be distributed back distributed from the other direction. It doesn't matter the order. We already talked about that one. And then this is another associative. It doesn't matter whether you multiply these two or multiply, you know, these two together first. It's uh, the associative property also stands. So then I have a few problems. And here, you'll love these problems. They're like really nice and easy, okay? 3W. Well, you're going to take 3 and you're going to multiply it by this right here. So you pull W down and you're just going to distribute. So this becomes the vector 6, negative 9. And that's your answer. What those easy? V plus W, you're going to take negative 1 plus 2. You're going to take 2 plus negative 3. Then you end up getting 1, negative 1. Again, easy. Negative 4 times V minus W. So I'm going to take negative 4. I'm going to take V minus W is negative 1 minus 2. And then 2 minus negative 3. So I'm going to find that first, and then last I'll distribute the negative 4. This is plus here, so 5. And now that becomes 12, negative 20. Okay. Now to see these lines, what do these lines mean? Magnitude means find the length. So first I'm going to do what's on the inside. And then after that, I'm going to go and I'm going to find the length of it. All right, so 3 times W, if I multiply W by 3, I end up with 6 and negative 9. And then it says to subtract 2 times W. 2 times W is negative 2, 4. When I subtract these, I get 6 plus 2 for the X value and negative 9 minus 4 for the Y value, which gives me 8, negative 13. Now I have to find the magnitude of that. So to find the magnitude, it's the square root of the x value squared and the y value squared, which is the square root of 64 plus 169, which is the square root of 233. And there's your answer. So whenever you're asked to find a magnitude, you're not going to end up with a vector. You're going to end up with a length. Whenever you're asked to add vectors together, you're going to end up with a vector. Okay. So some of your answers will end up as vectors. Some will end up as just regular numbers. Okay. I think where I left, I think we're going to stop there. We have like four minutes left. And I don't think I want to get into this stuff yet because it, like, this expands, you know. I think that's a good stopping point where we're at right there, Okay. So we'll end right there. Certainly you'll be able to do part of your homework from that, you know, over the weekend. And then uh, you'll be able to finish up Monday night, okay, or Tuesday night.